Hey, good morning, everyone. I am, my name is Artie. I'm the Vintage Stitcher, and um, I'm here to tell you a little bit about myself and um, show you what I'm working on. I am a cross stitcher, a quilter, and a knitter. And the knitting is a very loose term knitting. Um, <clears throat> so I get asked all the time how I get things so much done in such a short amount of time. Um, I can tell you I am a extremely focused person when it comes to my crafting and my projects. Um, the other thing about me is I don't have very many work in progresses. I don't have a ton of whips. I um, It messes with my head if I have too much stuff sitting around that needs to get done. So I generally only have like one large cross stitch project going, which is in my frame like or my hoop on my dining room table, and I'll show you that on another day. I have a small cross stitch project always going that, you know, if I just feel like sitting and watching TV and kind of vegging out for the night um, or a travel project, you know, it's one of those things where your husband says, oh, let's go, and you didn't have time to prepare. It's my kind of go-to grab bag, and I can go for a weekend or something and have something to stitch in the car or at the hotel or camper or whatever we're doing. Um, I usually have one quilt project going at a time and um, one knitting project going at a time. And again, my knitting is a very loose term. I knit hats, mittens, and sometimes a shawl or a scarf. That's about it. So that too is kind of in a grab bag. And I, I do a lot of that like in the truck when we're traveling or camping, you know, or when I'm just kind of need that mindless repetition of doing something fun. So I am going to tell you a little bit about myself. I am from Upper Michigan. Um, Michigan kind of has three little areas. <laughs> you have the mitten part. I don't know if it's this way or this way, whatever. The mitten part, which is lower Michigan. So from about halfway and down is lower Michigan. This part of the mitten is northern Michigan. And then above the Mackinac Bridge is the other part of Michigan, which is upper Michigan. Um, and I kind of live like at the southern, the mid southern point of upper Michigan. It is a small border town with Wisconsin. So we're right kind of Wisconsin surrounds us on one side and then Michigan surrounds us on the other side. So <clears throat> that is where I'm from. It, and it is extremely cold. I am not a winter girl. I, I will. You'll be hearing me whine from now until June until it hits 60. Um, it's cold and it's snowy here. And, you know, I'm not an outdoor person. So it really, I just stay in and stitch and sew. But, you know, we have our family here. This is where we live. <laughs> this is where our roots are. Um, my husband and I have five children. I've been married to him for 10 years. We've been together for 12 um, is second marriage for both of us. He has three children. I have two children and, um, we have four grandchildren. So we're very blended, but we're very close. We all, we blended really well and we're all pretty close and get along. And so we have four grandchildren. I have uh, one granddaughter and three grandsons and they're just perfect. You know, they're perfect. <laughs> um, I have my mother-in-law who occasionally lives with us and stays with us. So you'll be hearing stories of grandchildren, mother-in-law stories, parent stories. Um, and then we do also have a Shih Tzu who is, um, she was the run to the litter. So she is only six pounds. She is a tiny, tiny little Shih Tzu. Um, and you will hear stories about her too, because she is quite the princess. So she's a kind of a high maintenance dog. Um, and she's got quite the attitude, but we love her. So that's a little about me. Um, I'm going to kind of jump right into what I'm working on, what my plans are for 2021. I'm trying to be more focused. So I, I guess the point of doing these videos is some accountability of, okay, get things done, get things focused. Like I said, I don't carry a lot of whips and I don't carry a lot of UFOs in my quilting. Um, and I get a lot of things done. So, but this year I want to kind of keep a record of what I've been doing. Um, because people will say, well, how many cross-stitch projects do you do a year? How many quilts do you actually make in a year? And I'm like, I don't know. 
It's just, it's not something I ever keep track of. I just keep going. So this year I'm going to keep track of it and, and see what the numbers really are. I've been stitching since I was probably, I've been cross-stitching since I was probably 14, 15 years old. I've been sewing since I was younger than that. And I've been quilting since I was 20. So I've been doing this a long time. So, um... So I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Oh, I almost lost all my stuff. <laughs> the reason I, I named myself the Vintage Stitcher is I find that I am always kind of behind the times with my, with my stitching. I am not a person who is like up with all the new designers, every new pattern that they come out with. I don't follow like the Nashville um, Needlework Show and what's new and what's hot and the new linens and... Um, that sort of thing. And even in quilting too, I, I, I just don't follow all that stuff. I just sew what I like. Um, I stitch what I like. Uh, I go to my needlework store and they have out all the brand new beautiful patterns and they're great. And if I find one I like, I buy it. But I'm the girl <laughs> in the clearance corner going, hey, <laughs> how come I never seen this? And you know, my friends and stuff would be like, it's like 20 years old. That's why you've never seen it. And I'm like, well, I love it. So um, I still enjoy the look of Ada. Not a lot of people like that. I, I like stitching on Ada. I like the look of Ada. Um, I'm good with it. I use uh, patterns, designers. I have no problem support, supporting small business. Trust me. I have an enormous stash. Um, but I use my patterns as a suggestion. I never, I very rarely buy anything kitted because they don't want it to look exactly like the pattern on the on the front cover. So I change out the fabric, I change out the threads, I change out, you know, the finishing style, all sorts of stuff, and kind of make it my own. So I'm, I'm kind of just off in, in the craft world doing my own thing, which is fine. I love it. And I love watching the Floss 2 videos where people are totally bringing up all the new stuff and giving great ideas on what fabric they used or how they finished it. I'm just, I've been totally binge watching floss tube lately and um it's great it's 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 fun um my husband is always laughing because i got earbuds in my phone on and i'm stitching away and i'm kind of off in my own little world but it's great so speaking of a floss tube this year was the first year i ever heard the word flossmas i was like so I call up my, my bestie, Monica, because she's on top of the whole stitching world. She's been doing uh, stitching her entire life, and she's got all the new gadgets and all the new everything. And she's got f any questions I have about cross-stitching, she's my go-to girl. So I call her up. I'm like, what the heck is a floss miss? So she explained it to me, and I'm like, oh, that sounds like fun. So I'm watching different floss miss videos from 2019 kind of catching up in like November and going, okay. So then I start watching floss two videos for 2020 and each, each stitcher or each, um, floss tuber has a different way of celebrating floss miss. And I thought, okay, this is fun. Um, some of them were doing like a new start every day. And I was thinking, oh my God, my OCD just went absolutely crazy. I, I couldn't do that. There's no way I could do that. And you know, Unless it was something that I could finish that day and then start the next day. There was no way I could do that. So I decided to celebrate Flossmas by starting a new project on December 1st. And then working on it until it was done. And last year for me was a year of smalls. I, I really could not concentrate on anything meatier than a pin cushion or an ornament. Or I just couldn't... I just, and I am sure we all dealt with 2000 or 2020 in our own way. And that was the way I handled it. Um, I didn't do any large quilting projects. I didn't, it was just all small stuff, which is okay. Everybody does things differently. But by time December came around, I was ready to start a project with a little bit more meat in it. So I'm kind of scrolling through the internet and Google and Pinterest and all sorts, you know, Instagram and everything to kind of get some ideas of what do I want to start for Flossness. And I stumbled across 
a pattern that was designed as a freebie pattern. It was designed for Arafil, the thread, and it's um, by Susan Ake. I think, hopefully I'm saying her name right. It's A-C-H-E. And she designed um, some quilts for Moda also. And I did one of her quilts last last summer and it was so much fun. It was a stitch long. So I, I looked at her pattern for her cross stitch pattern. I was like, I fell in love. That was it. Um, she had it done in very bright colors, but I love the pattern. So, and I thought this is, this would be a good chance for me to try out sulky threads. She had done it with the air fill, but I really was like the sulky threads were all the talk and everything like that. So I picked out, I did a conversion and I picked out sulky threads that I just absolutely love that would suit my home. And I started the project and I'm doing it on 18 count Ada. Um, it is called Joy Noel, and it's by Susan Ake. And I think if you go on the Arafil website, you might still be able to get it. You just print it off. And I'm going to try, hopefully, and this is it. I'm going to bring it up close so you can kind of see. So it's a Christmas sampler. It's nine pages, and you can see I'm, I'm down to page seven. So I'm almost done. And my goal for this is to have it done for January 31st. If it's not done for January 31st, do I stress about it? No. That's my goal, but we lead very busy lives and things happen. So I will not start another big project until this one is done. Hopefully I'm not wiggling around too much. And hopefully you can get a good sight of this. Um, but absolutely love this sampler. Um, and I absolutely love working with the silky threads. Uh, I can see myself convert converting a lot more patterns into the sulky threads. Um, and I may, I may try the Aerofill threads too. Um, I like the convenience that they're on a spool and you pull one thread and you stitch with it and it stitches like two over one or two over two. The convenience of it is great. Um, so I have everything good to say about sulky threads. So that was my Flossmas start, and I'm just having a blast with it, and that's the, the project that's in my hoop right now on my dining room table, and I get some time to work on it every single day, which is great. Love it. Um, but then there's times when I just want to veg out by the TV or, you know, we're going somewhere. We just came back from a trip from Florida, so there was airplane time and airport time, and that just that dragging on and on and on stuff, which is not very fun. So I had my little to-go-to -to project bag with me. Um, and I finished this. Now, again, this, this little, it's an ornament and it was from the Just Cross Stitch Ornament Issues. I have no idea which one. It's old. I could probably look it up for you, but, and it was very colorful. Everything was a different color. Well, for the sake of convenience, I just wanted to do a one color sampler. So I just grabbed a DMC color that looked good with the fabric and my house is very brown and neutrals and stuff like that so grabbed a brown and that's what I stitched it with and so I, I'll probably have that FFO'd in the next week or so probably hopefully by my next video maybe um and then so that got done but you know I, then I had to go back to work because I was on vacation and I came home the other night and I was just absolutely brain dead from work um I was gone for almost 20 days and it was just it was difficult to go back to work so the other night I there, I could not concentrate on my sampler my big sampler so I started this is another one this is my small go-to tv watching grab and go in the car project and this is also from the just cross stitch ornament issue I just kind of stack those up and then pull fabrics and threads and throw them in a basket. This is on a 14 count, nice big thread, nice big needle, nice big easy, oh, I can do it kind of um, project. And then you still feel like you're getting something done. So that is what I currently have going, finished, and um, for my cross stitch projects. I have a few projects I decided this year to try and be more organized, organize, um, keep track of my projects and what I'm doing. So I did go through my binders of patterns and picked out, picked out like 14 patterns 
that I really would like to see myself get done this year. I know that's a big goal. And if they don't get done, they don't get done. They roll into next year. Not a big deal. I, I'm, not, I'm not that hard on myself. I'm focused, but I'm not that focused. Um, so I'm going to show you a few of those. Some of them were PDF downloads, so I don't actually have a picture of the what the chart is going to look like. So I don't want to just show you blank fabrics or whatever. So you'll kind of see them when I'm working on them, if that's all right. Um, the next one to go on my frame after this sampler, though, is, because I've been wanting to do this for a couple years, is Heart, Heaven and Nature Sing. By Kathy Barrick. This is one that I just I absolutely love. Um, I don't feel that it's a very Christmassy, so it'll probably stay up in my house all year. Um, I just I I absolutely adore it. I I love some Kathy Barrick. Um, I don't love them all, but that's okay. I love some of her her work, and um, I have a couple of them. So, but I can only focus on one at a time. <laughs> so that's the next big one that's going to go on my, on my hoop. These are some small ones that will probably go into my carry-on bag that I can kind of work on anytime. This is going to be, um, the Cranberry Christmas came out from Artful Offerings right around Christmas time. And I was like, well, I got to have that. So super cute. It's kitted up. Um, that one I'm not too stressed about. If it gets done, it gets done. If it's not, eh, it'll probably come out later um, in the towards fall, and then I'll work on it. I like to stitch in season, and then if it gets finished, it goes up. If it doesn't get finished, it goes up the next year. I, I'm very kind of laid back in that area, you know. Um, I like to accomplish things and get things done. I, I'm a chronic finisher, but. I'm not going to kill myself doing this stuff. This is supposed to be fun. The other one I love is Bluebird. And that I loved. I love one color samplers. I don't know that I'm going to finish it in a pillow. I might frame it. I'm hoping to have a sampler wall one day. So, so my goal this year is to work on a bunch of samplers. And you'll see that. <laughs> um, I want a sampler wall. It, who doesn't want a sampler wall? I watch some of these floss tubers and they... They're sitting behind their or in front of their beautiful sampler walls. And I'm like, oh, I'm just envious. <laughs> so that's my goal when I grow up one day. The next one I've had for, I bought it last year. I put it away because I don't know what about it that is intimidating me. I don't know if, I, if it's just the way the pattern looks. I'm not sure um because I've been stitching for so many years nothing usually intimidates me but this one here Easter Parade by Blackbird Design is just kind of stumping me and I I'm not sure why um so I pulled some fabric for it I pulled an 18 count Ada which will make things easier for me than being intimidated and trying to work on linen pull an 18 count like an oatmeal Ada and I'm going to order the um the fancy flosses, the fun flosses, the over dyed for it because I think it's going to give the look that I, I really want for this one. Um, so that one, when I jump in, you're gonna you'll see me on a video kind of sweating, but it'll be all right, <laughs> it'll get done. It's a good challenge. Um, the another small one, it's not very big, but um, it's going to be like an eight by 12, which may be fun to do. You know, and it's a single color sampler is this Plum Art Needle Emma's Garden. And I thought that's super cute. I, um, I'm going to do it in uh, DMC 814. It's one of my very favorite colors. When I do red work or anything like that, that's my go-to color. Um, 814, 815, sometimes 816, but usually 814. Now... Like I said, um, the reason I call myself the Vintage Sister is because I absolutely love like the 80s and 90s, 80s and 90s looks. I still love the look of Ada. I love that vintage look. Um, I, it's cozy. It's country. Um, so I tend to scope out all these old patterns from the 80s and 90s and kind of give them a new twist. I'll either do them on linen or I'll change the colors to, to suit my home. Everything is just kind of loosely done. Um, but they're just fun to go back and go, hey, I can redo that 
classic pattern um, and make it look good, make it look updated. So, and I do that with quilts too. I love the old, the old classic patterns, the Irish change, the nine patches, the, the, um, wedding ring patterns, all those classic patterns. I love all of those. So I take those patterns and I update them with new fabrics and they're just great. So, um, I'll probably get into that in one of my other videos. So, um, you're going to see a variety of things from me. But one of the other patterns that I'm going to do this year is it's called Elizabeth Oatley and Hannah Bunting. There's two, two samplers on this. And it is from the Chester County Collection. Um, and this pattern came out in 1987. And I just love it. I love the primitive country vintage feel of it. I just love it. So, and I love doing samplers. So I have the, of course, I'm doing different threads and different fabrics. So you get to wait and see how it's turning out as it's in progress. Um, another one that I want to do this year is from 1987 too. I scoped it out on um, a D stash, a cross stitch D stash site on Facebook. I love those because I find all sorts of good stuff. Um, this is a Canterbury Designs Live Today sampler. And I am doing it on the darker tan fabric, but because I am not, I don't do a lot of blue. And this is screams to me 1980s. It's the blue and the mauves and the soft colors like that, which there's nothing wrong with that. But I am more... Um, tans and greens and burgundies and stuff like that so I switched out the threads um so we'll hopefully it'll turn out nice so that's another one that I'm going to work on this year another one um and it's this is an old prairie schooler I don't even think it has a year on it but um oh 1985 and I found it at a rummage sale I was like wow a prairie schooler at a rummage sale they had no idea what they were what they were selling <laughs> It's the sunshine and shadow. It's old. Everybody probably has it in their stash, but I love it. I love it. I love the simplistic feel of it. I love the old fashioned, the feel of a simpler life of just needle in hand and sitting and relaxing by a fire or just, just a simpler life. I love this one. So, um, and I'm pretty much sticking to colors on that. So that's all that called for colors. Another one I had pulled, and this is also from 1985, is a Schoolgirl Sampler 2 by Margaret and Margaret. And this is, again, just a basic sampler. It's an older one. Just absolutely adore it. So, and it'll go nice on my sampler wall. What I'll probably do is I'll do a sampler, I'll do something different. I'll do a sampler, I'll do something different. I can't do sampler after sampler. Um, I would get bored. So, but I like to stay on track. So, and then, like I said, I have a couple PDF ones that I don't have pictures for. So those are kind of put away right now. And you'll see those as I'm stitching them along and I'll, I'll introduce them. And then um, one of the last ones I want to get done. This will go on after Heaven in Nature Sings. This is going to be uh, Betsy's Autumn by Plum Street Samplers. I love that one. I love the tree. I love the colonial. I, I just, it's just great. So, um, the last, the last thing I'm going to show you is a project that I always have going. It's kind of, it's kind of a chronic whip and finish kind of thing <laughs> so <laughs> it's always it's kind of I have it in this little container <laughs> and I have all my fabric cut and surged so all my fabrics are the same and I have uh, finished a bunch of them but I have a bunch of them to work on and that is my prairie schooler Santas absolutely love them I've been collecting them for years all of a sudden and I probably do two or three of them a year, but I mean, I have, I have 20 years worth of these 20, 30 years. I, I've been collecting them since they started and I've been searching them out on D stash sites and eBay and all sorts of things. So I have some that are finished 
and out with my Christmas decorations. Um, I have one that uh, my friend Monica made for me. Um, and I have a couple that are up in my basket to be FFO'd. Um, so that is also becomes kind of my go-to my go-to grab and go, depending on how long we're going to be gone. My husband has a tendency of coming home on a Thursday and saying, I took tomorrow off, let's go for the weekend. And it's like, oh, you got to pack in 15 minutes and be ready to go. And he ha he loves that I do stitching, but he's not going to wait around while I pack projects and go through everything and get it all together. So I always have something together that I could just pick up and go. So that is an introduction to my stitching. Um, my quilting and sewing is going to be another video. I want to kind of keep that separate. Um, so, and I'll label, I'll label the videos, but um, I want to talk a little bit about my knitting projects. Like I said, I don't do a lot of knitting projects. I basically knit hats, mittens, and shawls, and I don't keep any of it. I go to my local yarn store. We have a beautiful yarn store. She raises alpacas. It's just amazing. I go in there and I pretty much wipe out her clearance bins for these projects because what I do is we live in, in a town that is kind of different. We have good industry here and we have good jobs here, but they're very hard jobs to get into. So we have people that are very economically depressed and they're kind of held down and um, their children tend to suffer for it. You know, um, I know there's, it's hard to say, there's poor people everywhere, um, but children don't need to feel poor. So what I do is, if my, my stepdaughter helps me, is I knit hats and we try to find the trendiest patterns. And right now, like that CC pattern is very trendy. So I knit a lot of the CC hats and I get the pom-poms and I get the little leather patch and, and stuff and try and make them as trendy as possible. And I distribute them to the local schools. And then they distribute them to children who need them. Our weather here, we're in hats and mittens from October to March. And it gets bitter cold. It gets down below zero, sometimes to 20 and 30 below zero. And these children are walking outside with no hats and mittens. And we just can't have that. So that is something that I do on a personal basis that's very near and dear to my heart. And that's where my knitting goes. Um, I don't have any hats to show you right now because I gave them all away. Um, as soon as winter hit, we got, we got those distributed to the schools and to the Toys for Tots so that those kids could have hats and mittens for winters. But, um, so now after I've knit all those hats, I have these little balls of leftovers, leftover yarns. So what I do is I make mittens out of them and I kind of just put them together, ignore my, ignore my little mistakes. I'm okay with my, I'm okay with mistakes. All my, all my work is riddled with mistakes and it, fine with me so I make these mittens and I make them in various sizes I make children's I make um, adults you know for the older kids and stuff like that and those will get distributed um, as we go along I have a connection at school so right now I'm working with this purple ball and then uh, a variegated one that I had so this will also have like a dark purple tip and thumb so that is what is on my needles today. Um, so when I say I knit loosely, that's what I mean. I just do basically hats and mittens. Um, but I'm good with that. I love it. Um, I take it traveling and I can get a lot done on a car trip. <laughs> so, you know, I can whip out a couple hats in, in a, in a one, one or two day car trip and a weekend trip. So it's good. Um, so I am going to close this video down because I don't want to bore you with all sorts of stuff all on my first video and I will be doing hopefully I will be doing videos right along the way and um, show you different things different projects I'm working on it may be cross stitching it may be quilting it may be knitting it may be decorating it may be something that I found off of Pinterest and I'm like oh look it I'm gonna play with the hot glue gun so <laughs> it could be any number of things but I truly hope that you enjoy my video enough to come back 
subscribe, like, follow me, um, see where I'm going, see what I'm doing. Um, and hopefully this will hold me to some accountability. Um, the last thing I would like to say are words that I try to live by. Um, I really have to work on it some days, but I really try to live by them. And um, those are be kind, spread love, and find peace.